Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Dev Logic. We are chatting with Mark Sampson, a senior software engineer. Mark has had a unique route into tech. He's actually the only person I've spoken with who's completed a coding bootcamp, a bachelor's of science degree in software engineering from the Open University, and like most people, Mark started as a self-taught developer. In this episode, we discuss the pros and cons of boot camps, uni degrees, and being self-taught. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to DevLogic. Thanks for joining me on this week's episode of DevLogic, Mark. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Thanks for having me, Aiden. Yeah, real good. Cool, cool. So, um, noticed your blog on the different ways into tech and had to get you on the podcast to to discuss the, the benefits of computer science degree, coding boot camps, and obviously self-taught. Um, going on to, to your background, uh, I'll give you a brief overview and then I'll let you dive in. So being a, a dev for five and a half years, and yep. you, it seems like you've done a mix of perm and, and contract and tech stack wise, seems like the JavaScript, TypeScript tech, but in the most recent few years, it seems like you've been sort of full stack using Node. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, cool. I'll let you go into a little bit more detail then. Yeah, so, yeah, um, kind of had a bit of a job change about six, six and a half years ago. Um, moved into software, it's kind of like the, the direction I wanted to go. Um, I was, was in the forces when I was younger, they were going to pay for a degree, so I started doing that. Um, and yeah, kind of ended up getting a job at Money Supermarket as a front-end dev. Um, so I've kind of been leaning front end leaning most of the time so i've done sort of uh cross platform stuff here and there as well but yeah started doing a bit more node.js type stuff recently so yeah it's been good cool cool and the unique situation well unique background about it yourself is you've you self-taught you've been in the coding boot camp with north coders and <laughs> you most recently graduated from the open university so the topics we're going to cover you've done all three yeah yeah Definitely, yeah. So, kind of to make sure we obviously do the degrees quite, um, yeah, takes a lot of time, all that kind of stuff. To make sure I was keyed on it and definitely where I wanted to go, um, started teaching myself first. So, grabbing like online books wherever I could. I remember reading this Java book for the first time, being so confused of what it all was. And then, yeah, started looking at Code Academy, Free Code Camp, things like that. And then, um, yeah, went into the degree route. Um, I thought that might be the only way to get in. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Then found boot camps. So yeah, nice mix, definitely. Cool, cool. So we'll get stuck into sort of the pros and cons. So I think first we'll discuss the Open University computer science degree. Um, obviously, it's fresh on your mind, you, you graduated up this week, was it? Oh. Yeah. So final hand in was September, and then um, yeah, got my results officially um, Tuesday. So yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. So. Do you want to give us an, an overview of of how you found it? Yeah, definitely. So I think like the the first aspect of it all was like the time is it's like three three years full if you go full time. But like looking yeah. at the average time for an open university, it's six years. So obviously it takes a long, long, long bit of effort mm. there. Um, obviously the cost, all that kind of stuff. But the the main thing that I always think about, ignoring the obvious like cost and time, is like the it's the, the depth of knowledge you go into, like whereas, like comparing it with boating boot camp, boot, a boot camp, I always yeah. imagine it more of like a, a vocational versus academic. You still do a bit of hands-on stuff down the degree yeah. route, but it's it's less intense. Um, there's less sort of focus on that. It's more understanding the concepts of what they are, yeah, rather than how you do it. Is how I'd always say it. Um, but yeah, there's definitely still opportunities to get hands-on um, yeah and that was just my experience I don't, i'm not sure what other brick and mortar universities are like speaking to some people they've kind of said um they focus more on one language and one mm. one, one part of the stack as well so there's i think it definitely depends on which university you go to and how that sort of pans out i guess yeah definitely because I've, I've noticed i'm not sure with the open university um but different universities they've seemed to focus more on java um mm. And that sort of led people to go down the Java route, um, and and also as well, I've noticed that the the content that they delivered 
in the university, it opens more doors to like maybe cybersecurity or mm -hmm. it opens doors to say DevOps and different routes instead of coding. Um, with the open university, roughly how many hours a week would you spend in studying? So um, it kind of depended. Obviously, you get you get summers off still, things like that. Um, I think it probably depends on which course you do, but um, I think you can do them over summer in some some modules. But so I had that time off, mm. and then a little bit over Christmas they factor that in as well. So you're not all out all year. However, on average, you're looking at like depending on how many modules you do at the same time, so sort of ten to twenty hours a week. Um, but again, like I, I'll. I'll sort of download resources to read things um, on the go. So from like commuting way way back when I used to commute, mm. I'd, I'd be looking at things like there. And you, it's like all about how you structure your time. Yeah. Um, so not as much just oh, it's like ten hours. I've got to do two hours every evening. Um, and then some weeks you'd have like an assignment coming up, so you're going to do mm. more hours. And it, but it's just the average would come out to about ten hours, roughly for me. Um, but yeah, sometimes I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> it's just slacking big time um, and then having to chase my tail a little bit. But yeah, yeah other times. And it, as well, I find like the more interested I was in something, the more naturally I'd gravitate towards learning more about it. Yeah. So like arguably one of the worst um, modules I did was data ana data management analysis. And it was just like, it was so dry, just looking at all this data. <laughs> so it's, and it was really good in the sense that I know I don't want to go be a data engineer anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it was really difficult to turn down going out on my bike um, on an April sunny afternoon, and I've got to sit in and learn about data analysis. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I can imagine because so you, I know it's difficult over the last six years to to break down what the content has been. But have you mm -hmm. got a bit of an overview of what you covered? Yeah, so I covered. I I did a. I, I'm not. I think the the main degree that you do. Uh, Open University is literally just computing and IT, but then the the next two years you can specialise whether it's software engineering, cyber security. Um, I can't remember the other two, but um, you, you basically then select various modules depending on which route you're taking. So early on, you still cover the basics of which, which I really enjoyed was like a an overview of what um, IT is and how it affects your everyday life, things like that. Um, and then after that, you do a little bit of maths. Um, you could decide whether you want to do an advanced maths or a essential maths. I started doing the advanced. It was way too hard for me, having left school a long time ago. Um, yeah. But again, they offer you support if you want to build yourself on that. Um, so that was really good. And yeah, after that, I try to think what else. You do a bit. Of, you do a dedicated Java module, which is really interesting. Um, and that again, it doesn't go into like hands-on on Java a lot. It's like this is what a server is and this is how you would sort of implement a server. And it, it like uses the Java basis of like, this is what HTTP request is and this is how you'd interact. It's in that sense. Um, and it's, yeah, so you don't go into like heavy into Java as such, but you learn about it. You learn what it is. You learn, it's like the introduction of what programming languages are, things like that. Um, I think what else we did after that. Um, you do. I, I chose to do a software engineering route, so I did things like web and cloud technologies. That was a really interesting module. That was quite up to date, surprisingly enough. So they cover things like AWS and what the cloud is, um, quite comprehensively. There, um, they go into the web technology side of things, but they slow, like they sort of introduce what web frameworks are, such as React and Vue and all that kind of stuff. But it's more focused on this is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. And then, yeah, uh, there's a sort of varied set of modules you can pick up. So that's what's really good. It's not just a um, here are the modules you're doing, um, unlucky kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's real good. How was how was the support element? So we've we've obviously been on online, not bricks and mortar. How, mm -hmm. how do they support you? So that's again. It, yeah, I'd love to say every tutor I had was super supportive, always there. I think some may do multiple modules. So some of them were really, like, the, my final module was the best tutor I had, which was really good. And it showed, I didn't get a distinction of my final module. And he was there all the time, and he took me yeah. through it, like, one-on-one. -on -one. He didn't like doing large groups, um, sort of, which most tutors would do. Um, and yeah. those tended to be little 
more flaky. However, if I even even in those situations, if I went to them with a question, which I did do, they were super responsive. They would push me in the right direction. They'd give me more resources, all that kind of stuff. So if you needed it, they were there. But it was kind of like, a, as I say, not like I don't know, they're not instantly there. You have to push for it a little bit. I feel like. Yeah, I just think that's with with any remote element, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. More tricks got it, and then the cost element as well. Um, the typical uni fees are what close to thirty grand, aren't they? Yeah, um, and then I think Open University, what is around twenty grand, is it? Yeah, so it's about about twenty thousand. Um, and though those module costs as well, they do go up a little bit, the same as typical university fees do every year. Um, but I. Obviously, I was in the forces, as I mentioned earlier, so I didn't have to pay for any of that. So I was, I was quite lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I've sacrificed my time for no debt, I guess. But yeah, um, yeah, it's it's quite a lot to sort of stump up front, I guess, if you're paying that through the Open University. Yeah. Um, but again, you can still get um, student loans and all that kind of stuff. So Yeah, yeah. And obviously training... Uh, providers as well and you know yeah. like, like you said with you being in the forces you know that's cool that's cool and then so we'll we'll touch on boot camps which is something i'm obviously super super familiar with um so we went to north coders yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah 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 we literally just did a podcast with with north port with north coders um yeah i love the brand love what they're doing i think they've helped over like 1500 people get into tech yeah uh, yeah so with the with the coding boot camp, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a, an intense thirteen week um coding camp really, where you teach where you learn the, the foundations of it seems to be JavaScript, most of them seem to I think some of them do Ruby. Mm -hmm. Um and it's it's quite intense, nine to five, five days a yeah, week. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll you'll be in a class and you'll 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 uh, you'll build projects. Yeah, that's right. So again, it's, it's just like it's completely agree super intense um i think you just have to go with it the mindset i think you really want to have to do it because first of all you've got the sort of um interview to get in there i actually yeah. failed it the first time around um <laughs> and i was like a real panicky i was like it, for me it was like because i really really wanted to do it, it yeah i was all quite nervous i thought um and then just didn't do great but they were like look you quite clearly want to do it come back and have another shot mm. we'll help you out with some sort of pointers of where you need to improve and then yeah. it was yeah second time round, they were, they were happy what did um, the interview consist of do you remember so yeah i think it was, it was just a little tech test if i remember rightly not a tech test as such like uh what you do for a, a job interview it's quite basic yeah. but you've got to think people are at a basic level um and they give you stuff to do before you start as well uh, which i really liked so Again, that's that's where I feel like you get out of it what you put in. If yeah. you're really dedicated, you can turn up and you know a lot of it already, um, mm. depending on how far you've gone into that material. Um, it, it's definitely helped. So if anyone wants to do it, I'd definitely suggest do it, like going into it even before you've yeah. started. Um, and that's always going to, you've got that initial step up. Um, so then when you get to the end, you're even more comfortable. You're even more likely to get a job out of it. Yeah. So yeah, like I say, get out what you put in. Um, that's cool that they've got that element of screening as well, um, because effectively, they're, they you know they obviously make money from people attending the course and paying, or or you know getting getting funded and getting paid. So effectively, they're basically they're they're making sure they're just screening the candidates just to make sure that they're they're going to be right for the course instead of just saying yeah anyone can jump on the course is the yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter if you drop out or not. You know, they want to make sure that. That the, the 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 people the students that they get on the course are, are committed. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, I think it's right for them to do that as well because obviously it's their their brand as well. Like they mm. they don't want to be supplying awful engineers because then people spread that word. <laughs> so it's it's <laughs> yeah. not good for them. They, they yeah. obviously got got to do their due diligence as well. There was another one I went to in Glasgow as well, and they also did a similar thing. Um, but yeah, I don't don't really follow their sort of. Um, business anymore or I'm not in, in that ecosphere They're obviously yeah. based in Scotland but there was a, a couple that I'd looked at um, all kind of different approaches to it one one you kind of sat in house as well that was looked pretty intense but again that's like an, another level of 
Mm. <laughs> Go moving yeah. with some strangers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, actual boot camp, really. <laughs> moving yeah. away, yeah, good. Yeah, that 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 is that is commitment. Because um, was you on site when when you was doing it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I was all on site. Um, yeah. They're in their old office um, near Manchester, Victoria, and super super good environment. I think what as well I mentioned it in the in the article as well is they because of the fact that they a lot of the instructors or I think all of them were past graduates, they were they'd always pick like the super intelligent the best of the bunch there and they were all super keen on carrying on that learning and sort of helping other people. Yeah. And like you, they were always so kind and you, you kind of were just yeah, in a, in that in that sort of environment, I feel like he's set to thrive. I feel like yeah. you've got no excuse not to do well, in my opinion. Obviously, yeah. there's outside factors that might impact your life, but I feel like they really do a good job of setting Giving them. you all the tools to succeed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's cool. Yeah, and I've heard like the support element is, is, uh, is outstanding there as well. So, yeah, I think they've changed at the moment with, you know, you can go into the office or you, you mm -hmm. can work, um, study, sorry, remote. Which is cool. And then, how's the how's the content that they delivered and the, the train they delivered helped you in, in becoming a dev? Um, so it gave me, like I said earlier on, it's definitely more vocational based, um, and it feels like you're essentially. It's like I'm trying to think. It's the equivalent of what I imagine it is like if you're a carpenter sitting down in a classroom and learning the techniques. In a, in a sense of like, well, this is the tool you use here, but they're not actually using the tools. That would be a degree. And then you're actually going into a workshop and using the chisel is what North Code has felt like. Right, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's where it felt it differed a lot. And you kind yeah. of like, all of a sudden you, because you've, and it, it definitely sort of highlights people's differences in learning. Like some people prefer just reading documentation and, and then doing things, but some people prefer just let me just build something with it and see yeah. where it goes. And um, I think they're both really valid. I think they're both necessary. I don't think one's better than the other. I feel like you need a good mixture. Um, yeah. And that's kind of another thing I highlighted. I feel like there's some little bits where if I'd even just been shown it at North Coders um, around like software development life cycle, things like that, I don't remember getting taught that stuff. And when I left and got a job, like for me, it was like, well, where's the work all coming from? It was like that day yeah. in the life of a software engineer that I thought that was missing. But the the actual content that you cover is like really good in a sense that you're going to leave as a, a decent JavaScript engineer realistically, yeah. um, and have the foundations to you know, become a junior and, and yeah. go and develop like like what you've done, you know, in the, in the last five and a half years, you know, stepped into senior, got some uh, you know, good mix of contracting and perm under your under your belt as well, and worked with some some big software houses, especially in the northwest. Oh, that's that's cool, isn't it? Um, Anything else you want to touch on before going to cost with with coding boot camps? Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, um, the cost element is about ten thousand pounds now, um, mm -hmm. but there's 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 loads of funding that that you can you can um, you can you can be granted. There's also if there's also different boot camps as well where you can do it part time. You don't have to be as intense. It's a bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a really good way to, to for, for people to step into tech because um, when I first started recruiting devs like eight years ago, boot camps didn't exist and it was mm -hmm. either you had a computer science degree or you was like self-taught to uh, like a, a really high level um, and it rarely came across people that, that, that was able to break into the industry as self-taught mm -hmm. developers. When did you start becoming self well self taught but when did you start dabbling with with code yeah so it was about i think it was i started my degree in like the the october at end of october time the year and then i looked into it sort of probably like april may or something in that year um maybe even earlier i remember yeah maybe a lot earlier than that i remember being on code academy for a while yeah um and kind of like not knowing where to go from there um so yeah a long time but I, th I think at the same time you're all like especially in my current role you you're always learning you're always like and as, and as a contractor as well i feel like people would definitely other contractors definitely agree with that you 
you, if you if you want to be competitive, you need to be constantly learning. Um, yeah. So I think it never ends realistically in this yeah. in this job, and that's one one thing that definitely drew me towards it is like not having to just essentially have something that's set in stone. This is the way to do it, which I felt yeah. like I had in my previous jobs. Um, there's no right like, real. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? How how much it changes. Like new frameworks come out, new mm -hmm. languages come out, new ways of coding come out, methodologies, and you're just constantly learning. Which some people obviously thrive in. Some people just want to want to plod along. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of industry like that. Like, do you know, if you look at an accountant, do you know, they'll learn the trade, but they might get some new software like QuickBooks or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they need to constantly be, be yeah. investing in, in in their development. Yeah, I feel the similarity there is a, like a, what do you call it, a lawyer or something, they can specialise in different areas like health or, I don't know, even like space yeah. industry or something, and then you've, you've got to learn the regulations in that area. You could switch between them, like you could switch technology stacks, but um, yeah, again, you kind of like, it, it's, this is the laws. And that's all it is. I think they do change as well sometimes, but not as often as yeah. the front end. Not, tech stack. Yeah, not as often <laughs> as as React or, or Angular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's cool. And then, what advice for you have you got for any anybody that is self taught, is dabbling at like you know, Code Academy or um, or you know looking on YouTube? Yeah, it's just, I mean, realistically, you need a plan of a, a target. I think I feel like. If you can do it as in a boot camp in 13 weeks, there's no reason you can't do that on your own if you're willing to take time off work. Yeah. Um, and again, it's just figuring out where you want to go, um, what sort of role you want, um, whether that's like an embedded or a sort of back-end engineer or an AI engineer or data engineer, anything like that. You need to know what you want to do, otherwise you're just going to be picking at things yeah. and not knowing what the tech you need to know is for the job you want, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely having that because when I first started, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, it was just like, oh, it's just coding. Everybody just codes everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just so naive. But um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, that would have helped me in the early early days. Yeah. Knowing research. what jobs are available. Yeah. What jobs are available? Research the tech stats, the roles, mm. and have an idea of what you'd want to, what the end goal is, and what you want to, what what what. What position you want to step into? Yeah, yeah that's really good advice because it's you know the internet's just a field of random information. So yeah, you really just get lost in a rabbit hole of of trying to learn. Um, yeah, well, I think cool. one one thing I read earlier, somebody mentioned on LinkedIn was um, is knowing like what problems you feel like you want to solve as well. Yeah. It's like because then you're like, oh well, what's a front end engineer? What does that involve? And it's like if you're more like it's that age old. If you're a visual person, then you probably want to see something. So maybe front end, or maybe yeah, yeah. I don't know if robotics would be a thing because then that's quite visual. Um, but yeah, something like that, knowing the problem you want to solve and the sort of things that make you tick as well, that would then direct you to what job you want as well. I think. Do you change anything about the journey you've taken? Um, I don't think, given the exact same situation, I don't. I don't think I've really got anything in life that I want to be like. Oh, I don't want to do that again. Because um, <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy with where I am. I don't want to roll the dice and see if, if I'd end up anywhere else. But yeah, I quite quite feel like I had a good spectrum of um, like insight into how you could get into it, how all the kind of stuff, all the stuff I've learned on the way. Yeah. I don't feel like I'd like to change it any of it personally. I feel like if I was to hypothetically change my life, there was a time when I was looking at going to university and I just really didn't want to do it. Mm. But then I, I think of like, oh, well, I'd have a massive student debt, which I still wouldn't be yeah. paying off. <laughs> so I'm like, well, do I want that? And I'm like, well, I wouldn't have got to go away where I went and things yeah, like that. It. So it's, yeah, I feel like I'm, everyone's got their own journey. Definitely. So yeah, because the the skills that you developed, you know, being in the forces, you know, you you may not have got, or you wouldn't have got from from university, um, and them skills that you you picked up in the in the army probably help you today with communication and working well under pressure. So. Yeah, that that's cool. Because well, what advice would you give to somebody looking to move into tech? Um, I think, yeah, I think it goes back to the point of knowing where you want to go 
and what role you want. And after that, it's kind of, you, I feel like you just need to set a plan out and it's like, just dedicate time sitting down one evening and say, look, is it something I really want to do? And then probably just start small because um, obviously it's the whole thing of if it's a big risk and it's hard to reverse, like you're going to leave a current potentially well-paying job. Um, it's a big risk. So you kind of like have to take small steps into it. However, if you're leaving university as, with like an English degree or something, you don't know what you want and you've just been traveling around Australia, it's so easy for you to commit to it because at the moment it's you're not in a sort of high paid job. There's not a lot of risk essentially. So just probably just go for it. Realistically, the worst case is you've got a little bit more debt if you pay for it f through sort of like government schemes or whatever, for a boot camp, for example. But again, if you don't want to do that and you don't want to have that extra burden um, and you've got still need a part time job, maybe just start looking at coding um, on a small scale. Things like Free Code Camp, um, Code Academy, they might be slightly more um, web based, those um, platforms. However, you kind of you've got to think, look, Programming is all sort of the same in a sense, it's like you're writing some text document out and telling a computer what to do. So the, the idea is still there, um, but it might just be a different field that you might end up in. So, um, yeah, start small, make sure you want to do it. And then if you do make a plan, figure out how to get into it. Log, you mentioned the importance of building a real life projects. Mm -hmm. So can you share a project that you've worked on early in your career that you found valuable? Yeah, so I think I can't remember the yeah. I ended up I built a few things that were sort of like key markers in like open like essentially me being like, oh that's how it works. And one of those was I can't remember what the app well, I think it was like a sweepstakes type app. And I essentially um had to build like a uh, authentication and all that kind of stuff and I never really fully understood how that all worked um, and then implementing that myself I think I used like Passport JS and all this it, it was kind of all bare bones nothing like OAuth with like Google or so you, you couldn't sign up with Google or anything like that and knowing how all that worked and like having a database and all kind of and all these little bits in between that I've never really looked into in depth and having to bash my head against the keyboard really helped um, so it wasn't really the, the thing that I'd built, it was more just the actual doing it and the, the little bits like the authentication. And um, another thing, I think I tried to host something one time early on and that was a, a big thing. It, so it was like, it's all well and good, you've um, built something, you're running it locally, you're running dev, um, and it wasn't just a case of putting it onto um, Heroku or something that's like super easy to just, oh, here, here's some code, upload it or Netlify or something. It was the definitely the the more in depth behind. using a cloud yeah. provider and things yeah so it's building the projects is the process we'd be building the projects where you've we've learned the building blocks that have helped you mm -hmm. when you become a dev and then the closing question i use sorry the closing question i ask on this podcast is what make what do you feel makes a good software developer i mean technically just having a lot of knowledge but then there's depends what kind of role you're in um I feel like if you're in a um, a large business and you're a senior software engineer, you're not really doing much interaction with stakeholders. Mm. You probably get away with not having fantastic soft skills potentially as much. You probably still need a little bit if you're managing um, sort of junior engineers, things like that, um, and teaching people. But if you're just a sort of horrible phrase, but a code code monkey, and you're just smashing on the keyboard all day, then technically great you're going to do it but if you wanted to progress further than that you definitely need the soft skills as well um especially if you're going sort of even if you're staying a technical side you want to go down like an architect route or anything like that you're going to need to be able to speak to people um share your ideas not instantly ignore somebody's explanation and speak over them things like that it's like and just to try to get your point across you need you really need to have those so it's definitely there's a broad spectrum of things that you need um and it all depends which route you go, I guess. You could not have fantastic technical skills and then go and be, um, I don't know, a people manager. Yeah, in tech that manager, and... yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's a really good, really good answer, mate. Great, great advice there. Um, thank you so much, Matt, for, for coming on the podcast and, and sharing your experience across 
you know, your, your degree, your, your boot camp, and, and obviously be, being self taught. So, so yeah, I, I really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you for listening to Dev Logic.